Good morning, everyone. Uh, for some of you who have just joined us today, uh, this has been going on from last night, and uh, a lot of things have been said, and it's been very beautiful. Of course, there was a lot of attention to the anniversary, the 40 years anniversary of coming to the West. And we shifted that focus. I'm just trying to brief you a little bit of what happened. <laughs> we shifted that focus out of that to what the message is, because that's what's more important. That's the reason why I came. That's the reason why I'm still here. That's the reason why I go and travel. That's what touches people's hearts around the world. And that's what's real. Whether there's going to be another celebration, or another celebration, another celebration, I don't know. But every day should be a celebration. Every day. Every day there should be an understanding about what it means that this breath came. You know, we get so lost, so lost in our beliefs. We believe so much. It's actually mind-boggling how much belief goes on. Believing. Believing this, believing that. Not knowing. Just believing. And people believe. Believe away. Believe, believe away their whole life. And why? When the possibility exists to know to understand, to experience, to fathom, to touch, to feel. This isn't about, and knowledge never has been about believing. And people always, <laughs> those people who believe, believe that by believing, one day they will get to know. And when you look at what the message has been left behind. What they have said, what Kabir said, what Mira said, what so many of the saints said, is no, this track does not connect to knowing. That's a separate track, it's called knowing. Get on that. You know, I was thinking about it. In Japan, there was this horrible earthquake. Horrible. Now, of course, the intensity and the destruction it brought was obviously a big surprise. But the fact that there was an earthquake, I don't think that was a big surprise to the Japanese because I was there one time. Earthquakes began. And this hotel was just shaking. I mean, shaking. It had one of these, uh, like the Chinese candle chandeliers, and it was almost touching the ceiling. It was just going from one end to the other end. And I mean, it, it, and everybody was like, ah, what's gonna happen? I said, it's okay, it's okay, relax, you know. Um, <laughs> of course, the hotel we were in was way up there, and you look down, and the, the bedroom was almost perched at the corner of the hotel, and there was nothing down there. And, and it was like, my God. There was a pool and the, all the water sloshed out of the pool. That's how bad the earthquakes were. So I don't think it was any surprise. But then the tsunami came. And that had a terrible destructive force. And some of the footage, if you actually look at it, the vans are floating on top of water. I mean, how can a van be floating on top of water? But there is so much solid debris underneath that that van is not sinking. And it was a terrible, terrible, terrible destructive force. But here's the killer. Long time ago, long, 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 long time ago, somebody out of the goodness of their heart, on a stone, 
on the side of the hill inscribed, do not build below this point. Because they had experienced tsunami and they knew everything would be destroyed. So they actually set a stone, don't build below this. I think that's just marvelous. I mean, that's just incredible. There, there in setting that stone lies this incredible act of humanity. That's what I think. You don't have to agree with me, but I think so. Because somebody took time. You know, it wasn't just like, uh, let's just do this. No. It's, somebody, it's like, you know, this will benefit the people. And this is the spirit. This is the spirit in which those people who leave that, that's wisdom. That's wisdom. You know what wisdom is? That's wisdom. That little piece of stone that says, don't build below this point. Did anybody heed it? Of course not. I mean, everybody wants to have an ocean view <laughs> and be on the beach, prime property. And did they know about that stone? Obviously, they knew about that stone. But it happens because people believe everything will be okay. Those people didn't believe it'll be okay. They knew it wouldn't be okay. Let's put a stone up there and let's inscribe on it, don't build below this point. It's like, wow. Wow. That's all it takes. That's wisdom. That's the essence of all your safety. That's the essence of all your precautions. Somebody comes along, don't build below this point. And that message, what you are looking for is inside of you. Same spirit, believe me, same spirit, same passion. Same love, same care, same understanding, same, ah, what can I say? Kindness. What you are looking for. I mean, who did they think was going to read this sign? Did they have their names? No. Did they know who or could they even imagine the faces of people who would actually benefit? No. And they didn't write it on a piece of paper. They could have written it on a piece of paper. Don't build below this point, but they knew the piece of paper isn't gonna last very long. Stone. Generations to come will see. Don't build below this point. What you are looking for is inside. What are you looking for? What were you, what were you looking for? Catch 22. You're looking for something, except you have no idea what it is. And here comes the beliefs. Oh, you're looking for God. Oh, you're looking for peace. Oh, you're looking for love. Oh, you're looking for this. Oh, you're looking for that. You know, there are things in this world that seem to produce satisfaction. And somehow, we latch on to those things and go, wow, that would be great. I got a new iPad a while ago, the iPad 2. I had my iPad 1 all set, it was all protected and everything. So I'm looking for a protective screen. And because I am on tour, it's not easy. So every time they have to send one. 
So they send one from America, three or four of them, different ones, and they're all wrong. They're all wrong. They're shiny, they're this, and I didn't want a shiny one. Because in the cockpit, you'd look at it and it just glares right back at you. You want to be able to see. So around and around and around and around we go. And I am at this point, every time I hold my iPad, it's like I need a screen for this. I need a protective screen for this. This becomes a need. And then SMSs and emails flying back and forth, need a good one, send a good one, ta 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 Anyways, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And tried it in, uh, tried to put it in Buenos Aires, the, one of the screens, and it was a disaster. I mean, dirt everywhere underneath, bubbles, you know. If you've ever tried one of those things, you know what it's like. So finally, I had a few days in Malibu, and I went, okay, I'm going to lick this. This is it. This is not getting away from me. I'm going to do this to my satisfaction. So I take it into my workshop. There I have a big magnifying mirror. I get together the magnifying mirror. I get together the air hose. I get together the, the uh, cloths, the microfiber cloths. I am armed to the hilt. And I get in there and I polish the surface, I clean the surface, blow the dust off, bring on the screen, put it on. It doesn't go on quite right. Bring it back up, put it on, and I can see everything. I can see the magnifying glass. I can see the dirt. I can see the bubbles. And finally, it is perfect. And then that was it. That's it. It's done. Done. It's perfect, but it's done. It's perfectness doesn't mean anything. Even though it's perfect, it doesn't mean anything. It's not the perfectness. So for somebody to come along, and I say, well, yeah, now how did this person know I was looking for a screen for my iPad? What you're looking for is inside of you. But that's not what you're looking for. Because its gratification vanished instantly after it went on perfectly. And I was able to inspect it. There was no dirt. There were no bubbles. It was perfect. Every hole was perfectly aligned. And it is so good, you can't tell it's there. And its gratification ended. That's it. It's finished. It's protected. And it's finished. It's done. But if you were to find that which you are looking for, its gratification would continue to develop develop in your life for the rest of your life. One gratification, end. Fini. One gratification, evolves. 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 grows. And for every minutest understanding that you gain about the priority of that which you are looking for is inside of you, the results are tenfold. There's a lot of people, you know. Well, and I, in fact, there's a lot of people here who I know 
used to sit there in front of me in Golden Manor or wherever we end up. People wanted knowledge so they could figure out exactly what's going to happen tomorrow. They'd be enlightened. And there was a very particular picture of an enlightened soul that people had in their minds. <laughs> Unfazed, serene, slight glow. <laughs> and the brotherly love just flows. <laughs> just flows from it. And then all of a sudden, you know what the universe is about. <laughs> and really, you know, I hate to say this, but some, some people were looking for like a permanent fix <laughs> so that they didn't have to keep taking the stuff, so they're just permanently in that state. It was wild for me. It was really wild for me. It was like, wait a minute, you know, no enlightened person does that. The enlightened people walk around this earth stubbing their toes like anybody else. You know, and it's not about knowing tomorrow. If you really become enlightened, you realize tomorrow has no significance for you. The only significance is now, in this moment. That's what enlightenment is. Enlightenment isn't you will know the future and you will know the past and you will know what's going to happen and, you know, before somebody asks you. I mean, remember, in fact, in Star Wars, there are so many scenes that epitomize that concept of enlightenment. You know, where the guy just says, uh, you're not looking for these people, just move on. Yeah, we're not looking for these people. Just, I mean, it's like... Wow, you know, this is, this is people's definition of enlightenment, you know. And then the dark side and the light side and the lightsabers and uh, that was a culmination of a lot of that concept. And everybody who watched it really felt uplifted. It wasn't like, whoa, this is garbage. No, it was... You know, everybody wanted to have a lightsaber, you know, just and, and, and get rid of everything that was bad in this world. But that's not what it is. That's not what it was. And so how did you hang around this long? Because, because, every time you understood just a little bit, about the simplicity of knowledge. Every time you understood a little bit more about the simplicity of life, not the world passing by, not the world going around, but the coming and going of this breath, that that's your universe. That it isn't about all the relations and the relatives. It isn't about just the memories. It is about being alive today. And if you can live for one day, then let that day be that day in which you understand that day. Not understand yesterday or not have an inclination about tomorrow, but understand today, now, that the gift is given, that the coming and going of this breath is the blessing. And once you understand that, how amazing it is, everything else clicks in place because all of a sudden, it's obvious. It's obvious. You have arguments. You have arguments. I mean, what, what, what else do you have a family for? So you can argue. So you can, you know, go at each other's throats. And families are just absolutely brilliant at that. I mean, everything is going fine, not for too long. Somebody will say something, 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 
that will clink somebody off and then people will take sides. The rest of the family will take sides and perpetuate which was your lipstick color is one shade too dark. That's how simple it was, and now it's pretty close to World War III. <laughs> Lines have been drawn, battles have been set, uh, the tanks are rolled in, machine guns are loaded, and any moment the war begins. But that's not what's real. But to people it is. How dare that person say that to me? that my lipstick is one shade too dark. <laughs> and you, you know, you hear that and you go, what? And it may sound ridiculous to you, but it's not ridiculous to that family. This is sacred, holy ground. This is war. And then that goes on for a little while, and then that evaporates, and it's like, oh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it was one too dark. No, 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 it wasn't too dark. I'm really sorry. It wasn't too dark. It's the perfect color. No, I'm going to get one that is one shade lighter. <laughs> now what? And this is the time when the army retreats, recoups and prepares for the next battle. <laughs> and it'll happen. It'll happen again and again. But that's now it's real. People find themselves in dire, dire situation. Oh man, I, I got fired. At, you know, and how many times have I said this one? You know, my cat left me, my wife left me, my dog left me, my kids left me, my house left me, my, everything left me. The white little picket fence, the white dog, the black cat. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is my perfect little picture, and, 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 and don't come and disturb this. And then, boom. Picture is shaken, dog disappears, <laughs> kitchen disappears, house disappears, everything disappears. Last night when I went back home, I walked into the dining room, and the carpet is like, you know, half wet. Look up, and there it is, leaking. Leaking, 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 leaking. And, you know, Marilyn was concerned, maybe the roof will fall off. I said, no, it's not going to fall off, it's just leaking. <laughs> and it's <was> like, <laughs> you know, it's like no big deal. I mean, it's leaking because it's raining. And there is a leak. <laughs> if it wasn't raining, it wouldn't be leaking. And so this morning, it was like, well, did they pick it up? Uh, well, you know, it's still there. It's all wet. I had to move the dining room, uh, the furniture around so that this can be there. Put a waste paper basket down there so that the water would drip into that. I, but it's like, okay, it's not a disaster. It's not a disaster. It can be fixed. And that house, actually, what it needs is demolition. It's, it's been pieced together too long. Everything is like that. It's like sagging and it's just a very, very old house. Because a bomb fell on that house in the Second World War. Because when the Germans used to come, they would use that ridge to um, line themselves up for London. There was like their beacon, and then when they would be leaving, going back to Germany, they needed the rain. So they just drop all the bombs that they didn't use over London. And one of the bombs landed on that house, and it blew up, and then it was reconstructed, but I think it was reconstructed very quickly. <laughs> Nobody paid any attention to it. But uh, that's not what life is about. So what you are looking for is inside of you. Now. The, the rare thing here is, in fact, not that. That is rare, true, what you're looking for is inside of you. But the rare thing here 
is you have a way to get in touch with that which is inside of you. That's what makes it very special. That's what makes it very special. That you have that possibility. So practice. Don't be caught up in those pictures. Don't be caught up in those pictures. They will come and go. They will come and go. They have to come and go. But if you have to put a picture on the wall, then put the picture of contentment. Contentment because you are in touch with that beautiful feeling that is inside of you. If you have to put a picture on the wall, let it be of you fulfilled. And if that means that it looks blank to everybody, fine. Fine. So much light, it's an overexposure. So it's a blank picture. Because everything else will come and go. So will your struggle to be alive will come and go. And maybe some of you understood. You know, when you were young, it was like <laughs> running around, running around, running around, running around. Not too many, but there was a few. And then for somebody, just a very simple thing. Very simple thing happens. So somebody comes along and says, what you're looking for is inside of you. Same generosity as that rock. Don't build below this point. You know, we try to be humanitarians. <laughs> this earth produces more food then people realize nobody, nobody has to ever go hungry. Ever. And the reason why people go hungry is not because there isn't enough food. It's because of the greedy people who hoard it who hoard it for themselves. There's plenty of food. There's plenty of food. More than you can imagine that can feed the world. Many times over. <laughs> Many times over. You know? But what, what does the food go for? Do you know how much, how much grain it takes to make a bottle of whiskey? I mean, I got curious one day, and it's like, you wouldn't believe it. It takes an amazing amount of grain so somebody can get inebriated. <laughs> and that is called happy hour. <laughs> Which if they keep making it happier and happier and happier, it's going to turn pretty sad. And it usually does. So, all of these things, all of these things in this world, oh, should, should the people are not being fed. You know, I mean, here we are, and define democracy. In my opinion, democracy is a whole bunch of people Choose a few people so that those few people can take care of a whole lot of people. That's democracy, in essence. But the way democracy is today, a whole lot of people choose a few people, and then a whole lot of people take care of those few chosen people <laughs> for the rest of their lives. That's not democracy. 
Those people have been chosen so they can make sure that everybody has elbow room, everybody gets food, everybody can practice whatever they want to practice, however they want to pray to their God, that they have that space, that they have the freedom, that they are not unduly tortured mentally or physically or whatever it is. No, but we choose a few and then the rest. I mean, wait a minute. I thought we got rid of monarchy in big parts of this world. That there is actually a president or there is a parliament or this is supposed to be democratically established or what people want. No. These world leaders, they're like kings. They are, they are living more like a king than their ancestor kings lived. I mean, they, they live like emperors, not just kings, emperors. Where does the good money go? Every time they, I mean, I know, and I'm not going to say his name, but every, this guy loves Indian food. He lives... He's, he's actually the uh, president of one of the countries very close to India. But every time he feels like Indian food and new clothes, he makes an official state visit to India. <laughs> and of course, you know, Indians being Indian, they just roll out the red carpet for them. I mean, you go, you, a VIP is coming, so they clean the roads. But then how are the roads going to get fixed? They should, they should be put in the traffic so they can see, so they can do something, because they're the only ones who can do something about it. There they are, people at the airport, you know, lining up. Let them go through the security check. They'll change it. Oh, like that. Laws would be changed. Oh, no, no, nobody needs to go through the security check. Just look at their face. And if they smile at you, let them go. But it's... It, 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 Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And do people care? No. Absolutely not. They just keep believing in that day. I mean, I'm sure you're all aware of the, what was it, 25th? Or 20th? 20th, I think it was May 20th when everything was supposed to end. Does the rapture happen? Of course it happens. Everybody's going to get called. But they don't look at that. They set a date. Then it doesn't happen. To me, rapture is truly not the end date, but the rapture is the day you receive this gift. Because then you have the possibility of being in heaven. That's the true rapture. To be in that beauty, to be in that joy, to be in that, in that place, to be in heaven here. But that's not what people want. Believing. See, this is what believing will do to you. Not knowing. This may be a small voice, but it is a very strong voice that comes along and says, no. Not believe, no. Everybody is about believing, 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 believing. And they won't leave the believers alone either. And that would be good if they left the believers alone to let them believe whatever they want. No, they keep telling them what they should believe in. You know, this is really what Bible says. This is really, really. You know, yeah, here they are. They've got their Bible in their hand and that this is the word. At the time of Christ, what were they waving? They're just thinking about that, you know, just my brain, the way it works. I mean, they must have to have go around and say, you know, whatever Jesus is saying is true because look, it's written right here. Because that's what they say today. But what would they did then? What were they waving around then? Bible hadn't been written yet. The version that most people believe in. So what do you do? Very interesting. <laughs> you 
you just kind of hook up with this person who's telling you these beautiful things, showing you something, talking about the heart, talking about the heaven being here, and you don't need anything. That's why the gift of knowledge is so important for you. And I say to people, okay, practice. Practice, at least practice one hour. One hour. A lot of people are like, well, no, I don't have the time. You know, you're in serious trouble if you don't. Have one hour for yourself. You are in so much trouble, you don't even know. One hour is not much. It's not much. Because more than that, you spend every day in just simply being bewildered. <laughs> just wondering, huh? The monkey thing, you know? Oh, there's so many more after I was thinking, you know, the monkey, the monkey in us. We love shiny things, just like monkeys. Monkeys love shiny things. And when they want something, they have no inhibition going up to somebody and just grabbing it. Just like us. Just like us. And so, more time is spent in our lives just, you know, going like that. Like monkeys. To everybody. And this is so much the monkeyness that we have. But to be human requires that focus. To be human. To elevate. Otherwise all it is is just bones and skin and blood. And it'll go back. Everything. It truly is. Cinderella's story. It truly is. Maybe it won't be midnight, whatever, the hour will strike. And the processes of going adios begins. And everything undone, 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 undone till dust has gone back to being dust. Nothing peculiar, nothing weird there. But you have knowledge, take that time, practice it, enjoy it, enjoy it. It has something to do with your heart, the connection of knowledge, in its enjoyment, has so much to do with your heart. Because that's where you feel the joy of it. Not in your behind, not in your knees, not in your legs, not in your head, not in your eyes, not in your ears, but in your heart. Ah, the contentment. Hmm. Hmm. That is the generosity. It's what Ram says. Coming and going of this breath is my blessing. So accept that blessing in your life. That's what knowledge is about. And enjoy it. Celebrate every day. No limit to enjoyment. Every single day. That's what has been made possible for you. That's the blessing. So. That stone. Do not build below this point. It's wonderful to talk about this subject. New people come, talk to them about it. People who have knowledge, talk to them about it. Because everybody needs inspiration in their lives. Everybody does. I mean, look around. It's not a very inspiring picture out there. These guys are fighting, and that guys are fighting, and this guy says, I'm not going to leave, and then... 
Hey, listen, you know, get the message. People want you to leave, leave. <laughs> and leave while you, while you can. You know, but some people are, yeah, no, I'm not leaving and I'm going to stay here and I'm going to negotiate this. I mean, negotiate what? Nobody wants you. <laughs> because all the years you had to make things right, you didn't. Now all of a sudden you have this incredible enlightenment how you're going to fix everything. Forget it. That's not how things work. You know, it's like, uh, you know, there was this person, I'm just going to change the story, there was this person and this person went into the exam and people are still taking their exam and 20 minutes later this person is done. And then they're done and they, they keep throwing this coin in the air and catching it and throwing the coin in the air and catching it and coin. And so the inspector that was there said, what are you doing? She goes, well, I'm done with the test. So how did you do this test so quickly? He said, well, I look at the, the, the answers and I throw the coin up. <laughs> and if it was heads, I'd mark this. If it was tails, I'd mark this. <laughs> so if you're done now, can I have your paper? The guy said, and she goes, no, I'm checking the answers. <laughs> this is what these leaders remind me of. You know, this is how they took the whole test. Do whatever they want. They're the gods, you know, gods. And then all of a sudden, people go, God, you better do something. And like, no, I'm going to be here. I'm not leaving. I'm not moving. Oh, no, no, we'll fix everything. Now we will release this and we will. It's like, come on. It's over. It's time to move on and let people have a little bit of say in their lives and let them chart out a course for the better in their existence. You know, and, and there was somebody who said to me, say, you know, the situation in North Africa is really, really horrible. You think it'll ever change? I said, yes, it will. Because there's one thing that I know happens. People outlive their leaders. They do. They do, and there's been some bad ones, but people are still here, the leaders are gone. But there's always some bum ones that get born from somewhere, I don't know. If you think there would be a genetic test involved somewhere. <laughs> are you crazy or something? You know, it's like... But let people, people make their choices and choose and enjoy. And that, to me, you know, when you look at this world, that's the picture that doesn't change. That's the picture that doesn't change. And when the message like this comes out, what you're looking for is inside of you that don't build below this. <laughs> you know, not everybody listens to it. There are people who are like, oh, what does that mean? That's too simplistic. That's crazy. But there are some who do. And this world belongs to those who do, not to the ones who don't. Because like I, in that video, going to the moon, people didn't go to the moon because if people said it can't be done. They went to the moon because people said it can be done. Peace can happen. Peace can happen. Maybe I just have played a small role in it. But it'll make a difference. I know that. I, I know it'll make a difference. <laughs> Somebody kick-started something. <laughs> so it'll make a difference. Yeah, don't, don't overshadow the 45 years. <laughs> you know, uh, July 30th, is it? 31st? And... Uh, that's 45 years ago is when I started doing this. 40 years is only when I came to... First place actually I came to was Rome. But there was nobody there to hear me. <laughs> they were all asleep. <laughs> 
and uh, then flew on to London. I mean, even in those days, it was, you know, when the other kids were going out, having their summer vacation, winter vacation, their holidays, that's when I would go to tour. So there was never any time off. It's like you come back a day before and then the school would begin. You know, you go grab your books and this and this and this and this and this. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been very beautiful to talk about this message, to talk about this, to bring knowledge to people, to simplify, you know, there was, because when we began, there was a lot of concept. There was a tremendous amount of concept. You know, this is how it should be, this is how it should be. You need the Mahatmas, and you need this system, and you need that system, and you know, ta 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 ta. And it was like, no, we don't need that system. Knowledge works. Most people don't understand that. <laughs> it's like, what? Knowledge works? Yeah, knowledge works. News for you. Knowledge actually works. You know, you can give it to people, and they can actually have a wonderful time. So far they have that connection, so far they listen, so far they participate, it actually works. You know, and one of my objectives was that somebody in the middle of the desert could receive knowledge. And I was just saying that metaphorically. Guess what? <laughs> People in the middle of the desert have been receiving knowledge because of it. So people in prison enjoy Receiving knowledge, listening, everything, the dynamics changing. I have a, I don't think they're going to show that, but uh, there's a video I have, and, and in that, there's the captain of the guards at the prison. He listens. And it has changed my life. It helps me so much. <laughs> and the prisoners, it helps me so much. And so, wow. What a beautiful energy that is, you know, and, and, and it's fresh and it's new and it's real. And people can feel, people can feel that, feel that love, feel that joy, feel that beauty. So yeah, it's uh, still going on and uh, till it goes on, it'll go on. And it's beautiful. And you know, so many of you are here and in your own little ways you help. And for that, I am very, very grateful. I am very, very grateful because you helped me to make that possible. And when that happens, it brings you joy. And it brings them joy. Whether it is prison events, whether it is big events, whether it is little events, whether it is, you know, events in Africa, whether it is events in little places, I mean, whatever. What? It doesn't matter. And you help. You know who you are, who helped. And those of you who don't, hopefully there will be ways where you can help. Because everybody needs to help. This isn't, this isn't about, you know, my dream. This is about being human. This is about putting that stone down. Don't build below this point. That's... that's that has to come from such a goodness of one's heart. You know, just goodness. That's goodness, just dripping with goodness. Don't build below this point. And you'll be okay. That's well-wishing. You know, we, we wish people well by writing them a card. You know, I hope you feel better. Oh, you know, and happy anniversary or happy birthday or but for somebody to put the sign up there, you know. Do not build below this point. That gets me. That to me is just like wow. That's humanity right there. That's humanitarian. That's real humanitarian work. To just put out that message. What you're looking for is inside of. That's what I do. Everybody is blessed. You know, if somebody doesn't feel that way, they're still blessed. Because the blessing is happening for every single person. 
You know, there may be somebody sitting there, there may be somebody sitting there, there may be somebody sitting there going, well, I'm not very blessed. Look where they put me. <laughs> but you're still blessed. Take my word for it, you're still blessed. <laughs> So, that's, you know, that's just how it is. You, if you recognize it, then that's a blessing too. And if that person over there or that person over there or that person over there doesn't recognize it, then they don't have the blessing of recognition but they still have the blessing. And so, what makes it special, and I, you know, see the lady, a lady from Bulgaria back behind you, she received knowledge yesterday. Was it you received knowledge yesterday? Yeah, four people received knowledge yesterday. And you're lucky, because you received knowledge in the morning and then you got to talk to me in the evening. <laughs> that usually doesn't happen. <laughs> usually it's, you know, ten years later. <laughs> if, you, if you're lucky, <laughs> but, but whatever, we're all blessed. Even in the dire circumstances where the guy's wife has left, he's blessed too. He just doesn't know how much. <laughs> so, what makes it special here is that, <laughs> you know, that we get to have the blessing of recognizing that blessing. We get to recognize that blessing. Hundreds of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people listening to this message. There are people who don't have knowledge but they love the message so much in Brazil, they're making sure it comes to their little town. They're making the effort. Oh, yes, we have to have, and they call me Mr. Prem. <laughs> but so when they like somebody, they drop the last name and they use the first name, Mr. Prem. We have to have Mr. Prem. here. And they don't even have knowledge. You know, they don't even have knowledge. You walk in, you walk into a hotel, I mean, it was, that was, that's what happened last year. We walked into the hotel, the room was, had sewage smell coming out of it. So we had to get another room and so on and so forth. So after I left, the, the premies who were making the arrangements, they were going to go and talk to the hotel manager. The hotel manager walks in, takes a look at them and said, how come you didn't tell me it was him? I listen to him every day, she said. I listen to him every day. And if I don't, I don't have a peaceful day. And so her, man, her assistant is going, you know him? You know him? I like, know him. I listen to him. You should listen. To him. You know, and people, people, people are going to people and saying, have you heard this? Have you heard this? Have you heard this? Around the world. Magic days, things we couldn't even imagine, things we couldn't even imagine are happening. You know, we, our goal was, in those days, we were just totally fascinated by the Royal Albert Hall. And David Passes, I'm sure he's here, he took me to one of the concerts there with Judy Garland. And the dream was, someday we're going to have an event here. Well, that happened a long time ago. Came and went. Where are the dreams? Ran out of dreams. All the dreams, many times over fulfilled. Many times over. And this is what I was saying yesterday. I need that young, raw enthusiasm create that next set of dreams that go beyond what anybody could have imagined. 
the videos, finally get them to a point where you will be able to show them. They could be shown commercially, they could be shown, they could be advertised to take the message. And like I said, you know, with the media services group, there's some wonderful people there. And they can hopefully, through their efforts, take everything to the next step. And that's what's going to happen. And more, and more, and more of that beautiful thing. Thirst is there. The thirst is there. But the amount of people being reached now is just unimaginable. Unimaginable. I mean, it's so big, you have no clue what's going on. You sleep one night somewhere, somewhere around the world, people are listening to this message. And unsolicited comments. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nobody solicits it. People are writing in Indonesia. You know, and, and, and this was what's very amazing. Last time I was in Malaysia, the person who is the anchor woman for the, the TV station on which Words of Peace is shown, she watches it, her mother watches it. So she was there to do the MC. It was, you know, very nice for her. And she was telling a story that her mother and her were looking at the ratings of their TV station. This is, of course, a news TV station in Indonesia. And the ratings for her Worlds of Peace were higher than their TV station's ratings. <laughs> the people are watching all throughout Indonesia. Nobody could have imagined people will watch. But people are watching. And people are giving unsolicited advice. You know, you remember a long time ago there was that word said Korakinabalu? Long, long time ago, you know, it was like because Korakinabalu, nobody knew where it was, Korakinabalu. Well, from Korakinabalu comes unsolicited advice or unsolicited comment. Love this event. Everybody should watch this. Amazing. People calling in on, on, on the telephone lines. This is the best thing. People in Fiji. People in Australia. I mean, and I want to make sure it goes everywhere. Everywhere. Because it makes such a difference. It makes such a difference. Such a beautiful message. It's such a simple message. I'm not trying to convert anybody into Christianity. Not trying to convert anybody into a Hindu. Not trying to convert anybody into anything else. Just be you. Your relationship should be with the one that is inside of you. So, that's where things are for me. I see a big new horizon. Huge. If people don't like the message, they can turn off the TV. You know, they change the channel. But people line up to watch it. People line up to watch it. Wonderful things. I mean, you know, so many ideas and so many dreams, it finally looks like are going to be coming through. It will become so easy for everybody to be able to watch the broadcasts. You'll be able to literally go and download them. And in fact, pretty soon we're going to have our own store, electronic store, where you'll be able to have songs and, and different events and different videos and everything else, electronically downloaded, downloaded into your iPod, downloaded into your Samsung, downloaded into iPad, and wherever you are, watch away. Watch away. Fusion music, I've been working on that, you know, bringing, just, just bringing all this wonderful new music together with those immortal words. Don't build below this point. And, and the possibilities, you know, the possibilities, the recognition, the understanding. I mean, it's just, we, can, we can take that leap. 
can really take that leap. The enthusiasm of, and there's so many young people, so many young people, and, and to create a platform, a realistic platform. There was one that was created, you know, it was young people's this and young people's that, and basically they were all called and they were put in a room, and that was it. That was it, and they were going to, I figured they were going to get very old if they kept doing that. Because <laughs> uh, it isn't about just acknowledging you're young. It is about doing it. Giving them an opportunity to be a part of this. And to be green, and to be sensitive. So not print magazines, but create magazines that can be read on these devices, so they're totally, totally green. This is very, very important. I mean, this is the only planet we've got. It's not like, you know, if this gets a little bad, there's a spare one sitting next to it. There isn't. This is the only one we've got. And so we have to be very, very careful. And taking that into account and moving forward, it's going to be a blast. Around the world. Around the world. So, thank you very much.